How do you break down a coach's play calling? Seriously, I mean that. Breaking down a player makes all the sense in the world. You watch what they do well, you watch what they do poorly, and you try to figure out what determines their successes or failures. But, at the risk of stating the obvious, coaches don't actually play. So how do you go about distinguishing great play calling from great offensive talent? This question nodded my brain long enough that I came up with an idea. I'll walk through the Bears' third to fourth quarter drive against Seattle, my personal favorite of the year, and break down every single one of its 11 plays. Doing so will allow us to see everything from the way Nagy Chain's play calls together to what his offense does to set his players up for success. But before we break down the drive, let's talk about the context that makes it so special. Welcome back to the mid-third quarter of Week 2, 2018, where rookie head coach Matt Nagy is facing off against Pete Carroll's Seahawks under the Monday Night Lights. Due to an embarrassing Week 1 loss to the Packers, it's almost impossible to shake the feeling that although it's only Week 2, the Bears' entire season depends on this win. And though the Bears were able to score in their first drive of the game, neither they nor the Seahawks have been able to dent the opposing defense since. The Seahawks have only produced 73 yards of offense so far, and Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky's already thrown two interceptions, and neither were good. With 5 minutes and 30 seconds left in the third, and the score only 3-10, to 10, the offense desperately needs to do three things. Number one, they need to kill as much clock as possible. Number two, they need to run the offense around Trubisky and not through him. And number three, they absolutely, positively have to score points. With these three goals in mind, let's go ahead and break down the drive itself. The first play kicks off with a pretty standard formation. One receiver on each side, both split out wide with two tight ends on the left side of the line. If you thought this looks like a common outside run package, you'd be right. And from what I can tell, that's exactly what Matt Nagy wants you to think. The play starts with Gabriel motioning into the left side slot before dropping back for a screen and shooting Leno and the tight ends out to block for him. This takes advantage of the natural increase in cushion that you may or may not have noticed the defensive back give Gabriel. As he motions inward, the DB drops back an extra five or so yards and gives Gabriel tons of space underneath. With this kind of cushion, all it takes is Burton and Leno nailing their blocking assignments, which they do, to give the Bears a quick six yard drive starter. Play two is set up in a fairly similar formation to the last play, but this time the tight end sits on the right side of the line and the second tight end has been exchanged for a right side slot receiver. With a tight end on the receiver loaded side, this is a great formation to threaten the pass with while still running Howard outside. And guess what? That's exactly what Nagy does. Trubisky stretches this handoff to Howard's right while Kyle Long wastes the play side linebacker and from there it's a race to the sidelines. Miller and Gabriel hold solid blocks as Howard chugs out an easy first down. But before we move on to play three, there's one design note I want to cover. I find it interesting that Nagy chooses to leave the right side linebacker unblocked here. You'd think that this would give the linebacker a free path to Howard, but he ends up caught up in too much of Long's traffic to make any play on the runner. Because of this, the left inside linebacker, the only truly unblocked man on this play, is left with too much distance to travel and can't stop Howard from legging out the first down. Betting on Long's traffic was a gutsy call, but it allowed Howard to convert the first down with ease. It's a perfect example of aggressive yet smart play calling. Anyways, let's get on to play three. Here Burton and Robinson sit on the right hand side of the formation, pulling both the strong safety and inside linebackers rightward while opening up room on the left. Unfortunately, as we can see from the snap, Leno doesn't quite hold his block and the play only gains about a yard. But make no mistake, if Leno was able to keep that hole open, this play would have given Cohen exactly the kind of space Nagy wants him to have. Oh well, not every play can be successful. Let's move on. So before we cover play four, let's take stock of the current situation. It's now second and long in a drive that's seen Nagy call two runs in a screen, all originating at or near the line of scrimmage. If you have any faith in your quarterback whatsoever, this is a classic passing situation, and nobody's more aware of that than Seattle. In fact, if it's my money, I'm betting that the Seahawks are anticipating either a shotgun handoff for Howard on the left, or a play-action deep shot to Robinson or Gabriel down the sidelines. I mean, think about it. Those would be the options on a pretty basic Nagy RPO, right? But Matt Nagy's never going to make it that easy to predict his plays. In this case, Trey Burton, who's supposed to play a blocking role, runs a route instead. As Trubisky fakes the handoff, 
Burton slips through the crowd up front to take advantage of the space that, of all people, Anthony Miller creates from the backside slot when he runs the exact cross-field route the Seahawks are waiting for. Watch the Seattle linebacker hold his high zone. He's fully prepared for Trubisky to throw back towards Miller and doesn't gesture at all towards the wide-open Burton. This leaves Trubisky with one of the easiest throws imaginable, and Burton turns the space into a quick 10 yards. For anyone wanting to know what scheming someone open looks like, it looks like this. Then, after that bit of trickery, play five sees Nagy just line up and run hard. While this play theoretically does have a built-in fake screen off to the left, the real action is straight up the gut as these four linemen here and Dion Sims try to win a slugging match with these five defenders. This is classic power running and fits right into what Howard does well with the football. Leno and Burton on the outside have minimal responsibilities, there are no pulls or feints, this really is just a brawling play call for the front four linemen, Dion Sims and Jordan Howard. Kyle Long chucks his man in the dumpster, Whitehair puts his man on his back, and Howard lowers his shoulder for seven yards the hard way. This is exactly the kind of keep him honest play call that makes Nagy so good. You can't always rely on trickery. Sometimes you just gotta line up and smash the defense. Good stuff from Matt Nagy. Now play number six is a much simpler concept than you'd think, and is pretty much directly inspired by the question, what happens if you hand a fast guy the ball with a lot of room to run? This play's formation packs everyone inside, and as we can see, brings the defense in with it. With plenty of room to their left, Trubisky and Gabriel execute a zone read handoff to freeze the linebackers in front of them and give Gabriel a race to the sidelines with plenty of space to maneuver. You may be seeing a trend here. Nagy wants to get his fast players into space however he can, even if that means just using the horizontal space between the left tackle and the sidelines. And when those players get that space, it pays off. The running room allows the shifty Gabriel to set up Akeem King and beat him inside for the first down, exactly what Nagy wanted. So, with a fresh set of downs, the Bears line up for play seven. Pre-snap motion shows that Seattle's in zone coverage, so with a single deep safety, it looks like the Bears wanna to try to take a chunk out of this defense through the air. Unfortunately, someone had the bright idea to match Dion Sims up one-on-one -on -one with Frank Clark, and that went predictably poorly. This is probably the play design I'd question the most out of this drive, what with Sims alone on the edge and all. But even with its strange blocking setup, it gets what Nagy wants. See, right about when Trubisky scrambles, Burton is coming wide open in this left side corner and absolutely could have been hit for a 20-yard gain minimum. Unfortunately, Trubisky's not yet comfortable enough in this offense to throw that timing route and instead opts to scramble, which honestly isn't so bad either. He keeps the clock moving, picks up four yards, and moves us on to play eight without much trouble. And speaking of play eight, this play provides us with another example of how Nagy likes to use common formations to deceive his opponents. Here we see Nagy give Robinson and Gabriel a playoff, pack the formation in tight, and set up in what looks like an outside zone shotgun formation. With their blocking tight end on the right edge of the line, the Bears are signaling that they may look to just pound the ball outside right while their best receivers are off the field. You can tell the defense is thinking the same thing, too. They've lined up five guys on the line, one hanging off each edge, with two supporting linebackers and a deep safety over the top. They're in great position to stop the run. But what about a screen? That's right, this play was never about running the ball. With the Seahawks corners all playing seven or more yards off the line of scrimmage, the Bears are perfectly set up to, once again, get a player the ball in space. Watch how each half of this play works to perfection. From the snap, the entire offensive line blocks for an outside run, causing the Seattle front seven to collapse on Howard and take themselves completely out of the play. On the other side, both Miller and White line up solid blocks while Bellamy catches and turns to run. Check out just how much space Bellamy gets here. The screen leaves him with one guy to beat, roughly 10 yards to do it with, and a first down well within reach. While Bellamy doesn't do a ton with the opportunity, it's a great play call that gets a first down with potential for more. That is exactly what you want out of your play calling. But let's move on. Now play nine is a beautiful play. The Bears still want to churn out yards on the ground, so they pack their formation in tight once again and stick a tight end on each side of the line with Gabriel and Robinson hanging off the left edge. The defense responds by trying to simultaneously take away all of Howard's running lanes. 
with an outside linebacker hanging over each edge and another linebacker splitting the middle with the strong safety, it seems to me that the Seahawks want to take away Howard's outside options and force him into the middle of the field. With defenders on each edge and backup close behind, Seattle remains well set up to stop Howard even after Gabriel motions over to the right. But here's the problem. Howard isn't getting this ball. See, once Gabriel reaches that right side, he gets a running start back towards his left as Trubisky takes the snap. The line sails right outside zone blocks hard as Gabriel secures the handoff and runs straight by the schematically unblocked defensive lineman. Because Leno doesn't have to block him, the Bears end up with three guys covering all three major threats to this play while the ever-speedy Gabriel runs behind Burton and gets into, you guessed it, wide open space. This gives Gabriel a 12-yard square to work with and only one man to beat, which he turns into a nice 9-yard gain. The clock continues to wind, the Bears drive deeper and deeper into field goal range, and they do it all without having asked too much of Mitch Trubisky. But let's get on to play 10. It's second and short on the 17, and the Bears are marching down the field with a long drive that's featured two straight misdirection-based plays. What would you do? Nagy smartly chooses to let his line take advantage of an exhausted opponent by calling a simple off-tackle run to the right side, and oh boy does it work. Every single lineman wins his block, Long wastes his man, Sims clears his man out, and Cush flies in late to finish the job. This phenomenal display of blocking gives Howard plenty of room to get through the hole, turn up field, and convert the first down. This play shows us that Matt Nagy isn't all smoke and mirrors. Late in a drive with the end zone in sight, he's not afraid to just line up and take your lunch money. And this brings us, finally, to play 11, the final play, the go for the jugular play, the drive's coup de gras. After 10 plays that didn't feature Trubisky at all, Nagy realizes that the entire stadium is expecting another power run here, so he does the only thing he can do. He hands his young quarterback the dagger and asks him to plant it. The call uses play action and route styling to pull everyone on the defense in towards the right-hand side except for Miller's corner, who's left on an island with one of the NFL's fastest emerging end zone savants. Miller, of course, wins the one-on-one, -on -one. Trubisky makes the throw, and the game swings overwhelmingly in the Bears' favor. This is a heck of a play call, too. The previous 10 plays forced the Seahawks to respect play action, giving Miller all the room he needed to make Trubisky's job easy. And because Trubisky's rolling to his left, he's able to throw with a flatter trajectory that could have easily been played by Miller's trailing corner if thrown from the pocket. But as called, the corner ends up with almost no chance, and Trubisky adds a big, confidence-building throw to his highlight reel. All in all, this drive is a masterpiece, and basically a giant power slam to the Seahawks. Not only were the Bears able to kill over six minutes of clock, but by scoring a touchdown, they put a tremendous amount of pressure on Russell Wilson and the Seahawks' offense to do something about their now two-score deficit. That pressure paid off big for the Bears, too, as only a few plays later, this happened. Seriously, I can't emphasize enough how well-schemed I think this drive was. Not only did it accomplish every goal it set out to, but it also basically saved the game for a team that desperately needed a Week 2 win. It was timely, efficient, and effective. Everything that the Bears both needed then and will undoubtedly need in their 2019 run at the Super Bowl. When it comes to play calling, some coaches have it and others don't. Bear fans, this drive is evidence that Matt Nagy absolutely has it. When they need the right call, he won't be one to panic. He knows the balance between crazy and genius too well for that. With him at the helm of a 2019 offense loaded with potential, I can't wait to see what this offense does next season. Cannot freaking wait. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video and comment on it. That lets YouTube know that it's good, which not only supports me in making more videos just like this, but also helps me get the word out to as many Bears fans as possible. And be sure to follow me on Twitter if you're not. When I'm not posting videos just like this, I'm making Twitter threads that dissect players, football concepts, and more. Just search the hashtag BWMBreakdown and see for yourself everything that I've got for you. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, bear down, and thanks so much for bearing with me.